Hey everybody, it's Doug. In this video, I wanna talk about some of the component settings when you're setting up and configuring a data view in Customer Journey Analytics. In other words, I'm kind of on the second screen of setting up data views here. And over on the right-hand side, I have some component settings. And I wanna talk about all these in this video. And then we'll talk about some of the other settings in other videos. And I suppose before I get into the component settings, I do want to mention this remove and duplicate up here where it says quantity, because you can actually you know, remove and duplicate the different components that you have here through those buttons. Now, why would you do that? Well, I have one here that is quantity of products, right? How many products I bought, for example. And if I wanted to have another one of these, maybe I would duplicate that. And so I'd click over here. Now I have a second one, and on the second one, I can change some of the settings. Maybe I can even change it to a dimension so that instead of being a metric, it's actually a row of data. And we'll talk more about that on another video. But suffice it to say in this video that you can duplicate your different components so that you can have different settings, etc. Now, if I don't need that second one, then that's of course when I can go up here and hit remove, and now that's gone. Okay, so I'll select that again, and let's talk about these component settings. And I did just kind of talk about the component type. You can change a component from a metric to a dimension or a dimension to a metric, etc., by selecting that here. And when you do that, it will dynamically move to you know either the metrics section or the dimensions section there. So if I change that one, it'll move down. Etc. You can see if I change that back to a metric, then it moves back up there. Okay, now let's talk about some of these other ones. You've got the component name. This is simple. This is just what will show up in Analysis Workspace, and it actually defaults from the schema display name. So, for example, let's say I went down here and I wanted to select currency code, and I didn't really want currency code. I just wanted it to be called currency. Then, fine, I can take off code, and now it's very shortened and <laughs> just says currency. Now you'll see down below here that the schema field name does say currency code so that you can see what it originally was. But again, the component name is what will show up in the reports. Now the description is really cool because, you know, some of us are used to not really worrying about description when we fill things out, right? When we fill out different fields on any kind of a, you know, interface. But this is very cool because the description will show up in Analysis Workspace in the little info bubble that you get. So it's very, very helpful for context on showing really what that metric is or how to use it or when to use it, etc. So yeah, the description is very cool. Talked about the schema field name. That's just the schema field name. <laughs> kind of the original schema field name there, not obviously changing when you change the name up here. So that's just a read-only field. And there's a couple of the read-only fields down here, like the data set type. So does this come from an event data set or a profile data set, et cetera? And then related, the data set here is just the actual data set that it came from. A connection can be made up of several data sets. And so, you know, this gives you a good idea of which data set this metric or dimension actually came from. Next, we have another read-only, which is the schema data type. So kind of obvious here, a string or it might be an integer or a double or whatever, you know, the data type is. Moving down, we have the component ID, which is typically a read-only field, but you can see here that you can actually change it. This ID is used by the Customer Journey Analytics API, actually, to identify the metric or the dimension. Also, it would allow you to sync up components across data views to make them you know, cross data view compatible. But normally you would just leave this as is. And you can see that it's actually the same by default as the schema path. The schema path is there just to help you understand, obviously, the path inside the schema that this component comes from. This can help you sometimes because it can be a helpful pointer in case the user wants to see which XDM field the metric or the dimension is based on. For example, if you wanted to try to create a report in query service using the metric or dimension, you might need to know where that is coming from in the schema. And then lastly, we have down here this hide component in reporting. This allows you to curate the component out of the data view or out of the reporting of the data view, I should say. 
admins could still access it in the UI by clicking show all components. And so this won't get used too often, but occasionally there's a metric that needs to exist for creation of a second metric, but doesn't really need to be in the interface itself. Usually you'll just leave this unchecked, which is a default, because you're going to want to use the components. <laughs> Anyway, you can see there that the ones that you're really going to change the most potentially are up here at the top, whether it's a dimension or a metric, whatever name you want to show up, and then the description, which again can help you understand what that metric really is and how it can be used via the info bubble in Analysis Workspace. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. And in other videos, again, we are going to jump down into some of these other options. Good luck.